All right, now I've got some data. I want to get it in to a text file. Why a text file? Well, it could be a CSV file. It could be whatever, but it, it allows me to import that into Excel and then have it delimited. You know, so it's got five five rows of whatever data or whatever it will be, and it's going to throw it in every cell. How am I going to do it? Like this. All right. So first, I've got my Teensy uh, sort of coded up. So once it receives a command, it's going to um, you know send back the data that I'm gone. So in this case, I've got a simple application or a simple bit of code that once I write send read, it sends me back a frequency. Now I don't have the function generator on right now because it, it makes a noise and it's annoying. And um, so that would read something other than zeros. All right, so but what you'll see is that go through into a text file. Now let's go have a look. So we'll get rid of this, we don't need it. Now this is simple. This is I've got uh, you know some serial stuff and the, the freak count. Now that's uh, you know, a library that's used for counting frequency, for example, but it could, you could be using anything. Now, I have some serial stuff, so when it receives a command, it's gonna read what the what it's received, and then it's if it equals read, it's gonna you know do this line and it's gonna serial print that stuff with you know, data 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 delimited with a comma. So it's data comma data. All right, simple. Now. The computer side. Now, on the computer side, I've got this application made up using VB.net. Now, if you're going, oh, I want a C sharp, I'll do a C sharp version in a couple of weeks, and I'll have the code. It's real simple, not much to it. Now, I'm not going to go through and show you exactly how to make all the things dragging on stuff or whatnot. There's heaps of videos on on YouTube of you know VB.net, uh, you know tutorials. You'll find how to put buttons in. And how to how to think, but I'll show you the code behind it and explain it. All right. So looking at the code, it's not see it's not much here, it's not much here at all. All right. So I'm importing threading and system I/O. Now system I/O it allows me to uh, get access to the serial ports and uh, files, stuff like that. Um, threading allows me to run multiple processes at the same time. So you got the process where you've, you're interacting with a display and then you also have what's going on in the background. Now what's going on in the background is what's happening in the other thread. I've also got serial port brought in. So to bring serial port ports in, if you can't find what, an app thing like that, you go down to your toolbox, you find serial port and just drag it in, and let it go and it comes down the bottom, you see it down the bottom, job's done. I've also got other videos where I talk about you know serial ports and that sort of stuff on VB and C Sharp. So look at one of them if you want more detail. In fact, I'll put one in the cards up above. All right, so now in the public class, so this is everything that's outside of a button or whatever, outside of a button or, you know, the form. All right, so what I've got up here, I've got some strings, a boolean, uh, the APD, that's for when I label what the, the file's gonna be. I'm declaring that straight up. Now stop start, that's for my thread, so I'm gonna have an action that stops and starts on that. Now file.system.io.steamwriter. Now that is our ability to write to a text file. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm declaring file as a stream writer. So a stream writer is access to that file. Now I've got on off. Now that's a, an integer and at, at the moment it's zero. So I'm gonna have a button click and every time a button click, it's gonna change from between zero and one. That's what I'm storing at. Originally it's gonna be zero. My port as an array. So that array is gonna store all my, my port numbers. Uh, dim thread logging as system.thread.threading.thread. Now that, don't worry about bridge chatter, but that's the extra thread that's going to be in the background. So that is going to do all the talking and communications with your Teensy, your Arduino, or whatever is got the information that you want to get back from. All right, now in here, this is the form load. So as soon as the application loads, it does this. All right, so I've got check for illegal cross-thread calls. Now, this isn't the best thing to be doing when you're trying to code is, is to put this in. Uh, in fact, this will only work with forms. It won't work with WF, WPF. That way you've got to do it properly. 
but with forms you can get away with making this false. Now what this does is this will ignore the fact that you've accessed the, um, the GUI. But actually in this case that doesn't really need to be in here because uh, my other thread is not accessing the GUI. So we can just ignore that one. So you probably don't know how to put that in. Now this bit here, this bit here, I'm using the my, my port array. Now the my port array, I'm going to put in there all the serial ports that are available. So when it loads, it's going to go into the port box. So in the in here, this is called port box. Port box down here. So in there, it's going to add the range of my ports. So all my com ports are going to go into that box. All right. Now, I've got a button. This button is called log button. Now, once I push that, it's going to change. Based on this little bit here, it's going to change uh, my on-off between a 0 and a 1. So first button, time I push it, it's going to go to 1. And then this right here, it's like an if statement, but it's called a select case. So oh, then I can have multiple cases. Right, so case is 1. So for first push, it goes shh. It's going to go into here. Now, inside a try statement, what a try statement will do is it will have a go at doing something. If it can't, it'll fail out and it won't crash your program. If you don't have it in a try statement, if it does not work, it'll crash. Alright, straight up. What I'm doing is doing serial port stuff. Serial port board rate, I'm setting from the board. This is called board box. So I'm looking at board box dot text and I'm going oh yeah I want to make that my board rate so leave that there then I've got set the read time out so that makes if the serial if the um, Tinsy doesn't respond in time or whatever it'll just move on it won't do anything with it all right now my port name my port name is what's going to be in the port box so that's why that I've pre-filled it at, at the form boot and then I'm going to have to select it same with the board box. The board bait's already pre-filled. Alright, I've got my log button. So the button itself is going to go red. Now, stop start equals true. So I declared that at the, at the start. Now, what's going to happen is when I hit that button, it's going to go to true. And you'll see what happens with that in a second. Now, this bit here is I'm setting up a string to save my file as and where to save it. So what I've done is I've created a string using things that I need. So I'm, what I want to do is have the location at the start, so it's going to be the temp folder, then it's going to have the system.datetime.now, so as soon as I hit that button, that's getting made. All right. Then what I've done is I've added extra things. Now those extra things on the end of it is going to be uh, my location and my circuit. So going over here, so you can see location.box and my circuit box. And then at the very end, it's going to add the text. Now, because the way I've made that file name, it's got characters in there that can't be used as a save. So you can't label something that way. So what I've had to do is every time there's a space, I've taken the space out and I've put a dash. Now every time there's a backslash or a forward slash, whichever one that would be, I've put a dash. And every time I've got the semicolon, I think it's a semicolon, the two dots, yeah? I'll put an underscore. So that's going to be at the end. And then I've gone and added to the front of it, I've, I've created, put C and two dots. So that right there equals C dot two dots and all that stuff. That's what the file name is going to be. All right, now, the bit with the, with the notepad, with the text document. All right, so file equals my computer file system, open text writer, whatever, doesn't matter. So it's that part first bit there is what I'm going to save it as. That bit there, true, means I can append it, which means I can keep adding a new line to it. If you put false, it doesn't work. Well, if you put false, it'll just try and create a new file that right over the first line. You want to append. We want to always go after the last line. Now, what I'm going to do is that first line, as soon as I create it, I'm going to add to it. I'm going to... That's for me to say what every column of data that comes in is going to be. So, for this case... I want it to be the, t the date, the date time. It's going to be, um, you know, the frequency or whatnot, the RPM. And then what you'll see is those numbers get put in somewhere. All right, so now I'll look for my serial port. Now, my serial port, if it is open, 
I'm not going to worry about it because it's open. If it's not open, I need to open it. So if it's open equals false, then open it. Then I've got a sleep. In, this thread dot sleep is like a uh, is like a pause or a delay in the Arduino code. So that just allows everything to catch up, make sure it's all done. All right. Now I've created a new thread and I've begun it. So this line here creates the other thread. So just type in exactly how it is and it will work. So thread logging is declared up here. Thread logging. And address of logging, so this address of logging runs this bit down here. Now this bit down here, very small, but you can see stop start. If that is false, just drop out of this loop and just run around that loop. If it's um, true, which you can see we set it as true, right? do this bit. So what it does is it's serial port is open. We opened it before. Now I'm going to write read. The Teensy or the Arduino or whatever you have is going to send back what's going to happen when that happens. So I'm going to get my data back. So I need to know when that data was referenced. So because it's pretty much at the same time as really fast or close enough for my liking, right? I'm going to fill in the time date in, in the data on the line, in the text document, followed by the data that's sent to me. Now that data that was sending to me has got commas in it. And what I'm going to do is put a comma after my date time and the data that comes in. And then I'm going to sleep. Now this bit of sleeping here, now that is going to sort of slow it down enough or, you know, slow it down enough or, you know, give the time frame that you need between lines. So I want 10 milliseconds because I want a lot of data. If you wanted, you know, one second, so every second to get the data, make that a thousand. Half a second, two thousand. Two seconds, half a second. If you want half a second, 500. If you want two seconds, 2,000, and so on, right? Right, now, if you hit the log button again, what's going to happen is it's going to go to false. This is going to drop out. It's going to run out to here. But then the button itself is going to go grey, so you're going to know you turned it off. And then it's going to go... It's going to sleep, and it's, what it's going to do, it's going to let all that stuff to have finished. Then it's going to abort that thread. So this right here will get cleaned up, will get finished off, cancelled, deleted, stopped. Then I'm going to sleep again just to make sure it happened. These are, that's a small sleep. You know, these are very small sleeps, so you're not even going to know it's happened. Then I'm going to close the text document. I'm going to close it off, and it automatically saves. Then I'm going to close my serial port. Let's see it work. So I'll run it, hit start. It'll start off on another screen, as it does. I've got two screens, so you know, it always starts on the one that you're not working on. All right, so COM4, 57600, because that's what I programmed. Date, time. Then I've got, you know, I've got small, I've got the, what's it, 10 millisecond, millisecond interval. Then I've got the second. Then I've got the RPM because that's what my, my info was. What I'll do is I will turn this on. Right, I've got some you know info coming in. I'm going to hit log. So now I'm going to get every you know every 10 milliseconds now I'm getting a line added to it. So I'll leave it go for a couple couple of seconds you know as we talk and explain it, and then that way when I look into it you know you'll see this is out of there. So we'll leave that, that's enough. We can close this now because you know I've got the data I needed. All right, so now let's find that file. Now remember I put it in temp, so I put it in temp, let's go there. So I'll open up the directory and I'll bring it in. There you go. So. Right, what time is it now? You know, it's 4.23 in the afternoon, mind you. I've got it labelled as lab.test based on what was in the thing. There you go. So I've got over that small milli 10 second, milliseconds, I've got 10. Over the full second, 1,000. And I've got 60,000 RPM. All right, so and you can see how it's put these on top. 
So what happens is when I open it up, you'll see. So now I'll go ahead and open up an Excel. All right, so Excel is open. Now let's open that. So I'm going to go open. Then I'm going to go to folders, C temp. Then you can't see it because it's not an Excel file. It doesn't see. So this is all the new Excel anyway. So if you click this up, you know you can see the one that you usually know. Find all files. See, but if you label it as CSV, see look text files. PRN text to CSV. There you go. Newest one I've got. Bang it in. Open up. Then it's going to ask how I want it delimited. So I've got commas. So I want it delimited. Hit next. Then it's going to ask me what? Do I want tabs? No, because I don't have tabs. I've got commas. See? You can see what it's picked up as. Hit next. Finish. Bang. So you can see what it's done. So you've picked up the different things. It's got the time. The the first bit of the first bit of data. Second bit of data. Last bit of data and. You know, if I wanted to have more bits coming through, it would have put them in. If I actually sent a lot more, it would just keep going like this, except I wouldn't have headers because I don't have enough of those things. Now, if you've got this far, thanks for sticking through. Hit that sub button, hit that like button, and uh, I'll be making a C-sharp version of this application and showing you how to do it in the next couple of weeks. Catch you on the next one.